Scenes from yesteryear, we received some donated postcards and photographs from the 1930s. Details on that in a moment. Hello and welcome to the first Mead Week of 2022. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, this year's Housing Satisfaction Survey is out. A look at this year's Dr. Martin Luther King birthday observance and some winter weather guidelines. These stories and more, but first, since our last show, there's been an elevation in Fort Meade's health protection condition. At this week's installation town hall, Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland stressed that while transmission rates on post remain very low, a surge in COVID infection rates outside the fence line meets increased mitigation measures. He talked about what moving to HBCon Bravo Plus entails. The biggest change that occurred by moving to Bravo Plus is the capacity level for any facility. So for example, uh, under HPCon Bravo, uh, a facility was able to handle up to 50% of its normal capacity. Under HPCon Bravo Plus, we moved, we've reduced that to 40%. Um, if you've been to any of the exchange uh, uh, restaurants recently, you'll also note that we've closed indoor dining across the entire installation with the exception of the um, with the exception of the dining facility that serves the, uh, the DINFO students that operate in pods. Um, and then we've, we've also made some adjustments uh, to um, some, of the, uh, some of the services provided at the gym, uh, and we've canceled uh, quite a few non-mission essential um, events. There's plenty more during the town hall on COVID-19, including changes at Anne Arundel County Schools. You can watch the town hall in its entirety. Just go to our Facebook page and click on videos. In other news this week, the Army started sending out the 2022 Army Housing Tenant Satisfaction Survey. The survey is an annual opportunity to give the Army feedback on living conditions, maintenance projects, and overall services in Army housing worldwide. The survey launched on January 11th and will continue through February 24th. Each resident will receive an email that includes a unique link to access the survey. Last year, the response rate was 29% for privatized housing. Army Materiel Command and Installation Management Command hope to increase survey participation in 2022. In a related story, the first week of January brought the first significant snowfall of the year. With winter far from over, here are a couple of reminders from Post Housing. First, to assist with snow removal, all residents with a designated driveway are asked to park there. Also, they ask people not to park at the ends of the courts and along curbs. This is where the snow will be pushed. Additionally, here are a few more tips on avoiding problems caused by freezing temperatures. Disconnect garden hoses, keep garage doors closed, open kitchen and bathroom cabinets to allow warmer air to circulate around pipes, allow water to drip from faucets along exterior walls. Keep the thermostat set the same for day and night, and if you're traveling, set your home thermostat to no lower than 65 degrees. And if you do experience a maintenance emergency, call Corvius Property Management at 844-346-1490. In other news, Club Mead and the Fort Mead Equal Opportunity Office hosted this year's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday observance this week. This year's guest speaker was Reverend Kobe Little, the president of the Baltimore chapter of the NAACP. Reverend Little started his presentation quoting from a King speech and concluded with how each of us can honor Dr. King's legacy. I don't want anyone to take the words of Dr. King that I've shared this afternoon as a personal accusation or even as an institutional indictment. And Dr. King's words are Dr. King's words. And they are here for us to hear, for us to contemplate, for us to remember, and for us to act on. We are grateful for this space here at Fort Meade. We're grateful for the service of each person here in uniform today. We know that you have labored to make our, wor our world safer, and we're grateful. Finally this week, we started the show with a look at some images of Fort Meade in the 1930s. We received the images from Mr. Bill Stetka, the Director of Alumni and the historian for the Baltimore Orioles. Stetka found the images in a box of items belonging to his great uncle George Johnson, who was stationed at various posts, including Fort Meade in the 1930s and 40s. The pictures were very small, so they're grainy, but they're still a fascinating look at life at Fort Meade during another time. We'll post all the images on social media or the website soon for your perusal. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.